2008, Stories from Chippendale, Sydney, Australia and Earth. Here we have tonight, Essen Sakai. I think I got that right. And Essen can count. He's got mathematical skills that I can only dream of. He studies all sorts of things, but now he studies and teaches self growth, self understanding, self leadership. Self leadership. I'll label it on. Yeah. As... What 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 is meant by the words self leadership? Uh, self leadership is quite a broad term now. That you know, if you if you search it, there'll be a lot of out there. Um, but and it really essentially entails how do I manage my myself in terms of my my thoughts and emotions, my stress, my time, um, my life. Um, so it's very much around how do I um, you know take control of my life. Um, how do I um, develop the skill sets that uh, that help me be the best version of myself. As and I can't imagine a better, riper time for self-leadership during the virus here and across Earth mm. because a lot of us spend a lot of time of li alone, even if we're in a confined space with other people. It's forcing us to deal with who are we, what are we doing. Mm. Is self-leadership a valuable tool in, in a virus environment? Absolutely. I think it is a critical time for us to actually use this opportunity to develop ourselves because, as you mentioned, the extreme uh, kinds of experiences we've had over the last two odd years, one and a half, two years, because of the pandemic has forced us to really learn how do I lead myself through this difficult situation. And as you mentioned, many of us, including myself, and you know, we we live alone, or we have you know, there were times where I had to self isolate, which mean, meant I couldn't even go out. <laughs> um, and the tools that um, had helped me to be able to manage in these kind of circumstances, which when I didn't have those tools, I would have really kind of had a really tough time. Um, I couldn't even imagine if I didn't have the, the tools, which uh, which you may be familiar with. with of course, you're familiar with. One is mindfulness, for instance. Mindfulness has been a very practical and important tool in being able to self-regulate, what we say. So what is mindfulness? Uh, mindfulness, the definition of it, the formal definition of it, uh, is the, mo the, the paying of attention to the present moment intentionally without judgment. So observing our current experience, whatever it is, internal experience, um, without labeling it as good or bad. For instance, if I'm feeling lonely, instead of saying, oh, you know, why am I feeling lonely? What's wrong with me? You know, I shouldn't be feeling lonely. I should, you know, I, I need to do something about it. It's just like, this is how I experience what I'm experiencing right now. I'm a human being. <laughs> Let me create some space and allow myself to feel lonely. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. So as soon as one takes that kind of approach, it reduces the suffering of whatever that's been experienced, which may be unpleasant, of course, loneliness is not never a pleasant experience, but it reduces the suffering, the extra suffering that uh, we put, that's layered up above, you know, on, on that feeling or emotion. And this is quite really helpful. Um, and that's kind of the, the essence yeah. of, of- If of there were talking. an Olympic games in judgment, I would be a finalist mm. um, and look at me, I'm as old as the hills, I'm 71 and I still start the day off with early um, judgments, you know, rolling in. I don't know where they come from. Is judgment something that in your experience we all do? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, it's, in, it's, a, it's almost impossible to avoid judgment because as you mentioned, as soon as we open our eyes in the morning, it rolls in. <laughs> I don't ask it. Why does it? You know, why does it turn up? Um, it's it's all. It's. I think what's what has really happened is uh, essentially we um, the reason we survived as a species as Homo sapiens survived is they had to constantly judge their environment for survival purposes. 
so they had to scan for threats um, and and so this is kind of was one of the ways that we we survived um, and but what's happened today is that it's become so much that it's become in a way dysfunctional it's almost taking us the opposite direction it's it's almost creating self-destruction if we don't do something about it so how do you what are the practical things that one does to be mindful as uh, as anybody mm. each day mm. if we wanted to choose that I think it's a really important question and I'd like to just um, kind of relate it back to judgment because judgment is what essentially we all experience a judgment of ourselves of other people of the environment of the, our governments of the world whatever you know there's countless things we can judge on like no matter who we are where we are what we're doing it's like it was <laughs> endless <laughs> why you've been talking my voice has been saying judgment about this and judgment about that it's true and and it's there and this uh, and this and we the, the the good news is uh, the approach of mindfulness is not to get rid of judgment. In fact, it's to embrace it as a human condition. <laughs> to really, I'm, I'm not sure this is a load <laughs> off my mind. Why would I embrace judgment if it's such a bad thing? And it's not as really um, holding on to judgment. So when I say embracing it, is to uh, to observe your judgment non-judgmentally. <laughs> <laughs> That's a load off my mind. Can you spell out how I do that? So, so it's very much so the practice of mindfulness, which you may you're familiar with, Michael, since you joined some of our sessions, is is noticing every time that there's a judgment. If you notice that judgment without adding extra judgment to it, <laughs> it well, what happens? It starts to quieten down. So, so, so for instance, let's say I catch myself. Um, blaming myself, you know, calling myself names, you know, I'm so stupid. Why did I do that? That's just ridiculous, you know. I, you know, and then I notice myself. Gee, yours, <laughs> your judgment and mine should get together. I've got that, that judge. <laughs> that that's happening to us, like all of us, and I think, and that's why I made that kind of comment because we're all at we're constantly judging ourselves, and at that self judgment, then it's extended into our environment. So what I'm hearing, if you and correct me if I'm wrong, is you, you, you notice the judgment, you don't resist it, and you try to just observe it. Exactly, exactly. Okay. There is no resistance to that thought that's arising, but to, when, when we notice and observe the thought itself mm. and create space around that thought, it loses its energy. It becomes quieter just by, by observing it. Um, so we don't have to... It's very different to positive thinking, for instance, where we focus our attention on some other positive thought or um, it's not about that. Mindfulness is not about changing how we're thinking, but to notice that, oh, here's some thought. I'm judging myself. That's it, done. And that just breaks the cycle of judgment. The mind becomes quieter. And as we practice this, it just becomes quieter and quieter. Given that your training is engineering and you're used to observing facts, so-called, Something that you've uh, quoted, some research, I find really interesting. And I, I'm not accurate in what I'm about to say, but you, you say that if you practice mindfulness or meditation, I think for nine minutes or something a day, mm. in six to eight weeks you grow a particular part of the brain. Can you correct me and say more accurately what it is that that research shows? Absolutely. So... So this was uh, research that's been done, and um, the um, it's a, one of the professors of neuroscience, which I can't, cannot even recall his name right now, um, mentioned, and so I, just, I quoted in the book, where just 10 minutes of mindfulness practice, so just observing our thoughts and emotions for 10 minutes a day for eight weeks, uh, it enhances the part of the brain which is associated with, with positive emotions. And it just makes the parts of the brain which generate negative emotions. It, it like actually has a, a the brain structure begins to change. So the the amygdala, for instance, which is the part of the brain which is associated with fight or flight response, 
begins to, the gray matter begins to get smaller and the parts of the brain, including the hippocampus, which is around concentration memory, actually expand and regions that the prefrontal cortex that's to do with positive right. emotions. Yeah, so it's very interesting. Now, let's be fair, Dinkum. Are you saying this is actually being, has been physically measured? It's been physically measured, yeah. Well, <laughs> how? Uh, you well, can hear the doubting. Yeah, well, so the so MRI is pro the, the main method of uh, measuring. measuring the, 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 uh, the brain. Um, and that's just the magnetic resonance that that's, you know, put, they put people in this kind of device and it just scans their brain. And so the, the structural differences of the brain can be measured. Um, and generally what they've done is they looked at p people who meditated for some period of time and people who haven't, and then just compared. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And not just one or two people, but you know, it, it, it has to be statistically significant for, for, right. for them to make such a claim. All right, now that I've um, heard of the research, I'm going to say that's very encouraging. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's been more than three decades of research around mindfulness, which started in the 70s mm. uh, by Dr. John Kabat-Zinn, mm. who was he himself, he was a medical doctor, mm. but he kind of introduced mm. these programs. Right, yeah. just to wind up, if you can just um, be confident we're going to publish um, as part of this some of your publications so people can read more about you and find out about the things you're doing. Okay. I have to say it's wonderful to talk to you and I keep um, thinking as I listen to you, I've got to get this guy back. It's been wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for <laughs> Thank your time. Thank you very much, Michael. Good Thanks on. for having me. Cheers. Thank Fantastic. You.